The Land of Etiquette in Ancient China, Zhou Dynasty When talking about the etiquette of the Zhou Dynasty, we still have to start with King Wu of Zhou. King Wu was a powerful ruler who defeated the Shang Dynasty and established the Zhou Dynasty. He had a younger brother named Jiden who was granted a fief in Zhoui, which is why he is also known as Duke One of Zhou. However, he is more commonly referred to as Duke Zhou to avoid confusion. The Zhou dynasty was the name of the central government, so the first character in the king's name would always be Zhou, such as King Wen of Zhou and King Wu of Zhou. However, Duke Zhou's fief was located in Zhou Yi, and his name also started with the character Zhou. Duke Zhou was a remarkable figure in politics, military, philosophy, and education, and was considered to be number one in all these areas. Therefore, he was posthumously known as Duke Wen, which is a very prestigious title that is usually reserved for the emperor. His father was King Wen of Zhou, and he was Duke Wen of Zhou. The character, Wen, means having exceptional ability to manage the country, representing morality, and having the virtue of diligence and inquisitiveness. Hence, King Wen was the father, and Duke Wen was the son, and the latter was often referred to as Zhou Gong, Duke Zhou, by later generations. Why is he called Zhou Gong? Why not use the conventional title? It's because there's controversy surrounding Zhou Gong's role in history. After Zhou Wu Wang's death, his son, Zhou Cheng Wang, ascended to the throne, but he was still very young and needed the assistance of regents to govern the kingdom. However, the problem was with the regents, as power can be addictive and many people in history rebelled against king. Additionally, Many ancient texts refer to Zhou Gong as a king, which led some to believe that he not only acted as a regent but also declared himself king. Others believe he did not declare himself king. In any case, there are many different interpretations. Zhou Gong was a master in politics, military strategy, philosophy, and education, making him a highly respected figure in his time. In fact, many of the laws and regulations during the Zhou dynasty were created by Zhou Gong, including the system of etiquette that governed the nation. Zhou Gong's main political belief was that the people's morals should be educated, and punishment should be used sparingly. Instead, he believed in managing the country through the use of etiquette and ceremony. As an important minister of the state, Zhou Gong no need to go to fiefdom. However, his son was granted a fiefdom and established a new state there, which was named Lu. Since the ruler of Lu was Zhou Gong's son, the state system of etiquette was undoubtedly inherited and implemented very well. In fact, Lu considered their collection of etiquette classics as a national treasure, preserving and storing them in vast quantities that far exceeded any other state. Several centuries later, a minister from the state of Jin visited Lu and was astonished by the state's collection of etiquette classics. He exclaimed, All of the Zhou dynasty's etiquette is here in Lu. In the Zhou dynasty, the rituals and etiquette were very elaborate. We cannot describe them in detail here, but we will share a part of it with everyone. As mentioned earlier, Cao, a vassal, presented a barn owl to Duke Xing Zhuang as a gift. Why did he give a barn owl? Because in ancient China, gift-giving was more about the symbolism rather than the gift itself. The barn owl, when it grows up, will eat its own mother, which symbolizes filial disobedience. By giving this gift, Cao was able to express his opinion without saying a word. This is the benefit of symbolism. As a vassal, Cao had to be respectful in his words and actions towards Duke Xing Zhuang, who was the sovereign. Being too direct in speech would be disrespectful. In fact, giving a barn owl was very impolite, and a normal gift would not include a barn. In ancient times, it was customary to give gifts for various occasions. Each gift had a special meaning behind it. King's gift was wine, which was made from grain and symbolized a bountiful harvest and a worry-free life. The nobles would often give jade, a hard and polished stone that represented fairness and justice. Senior officials would offer a sheep, which was known for its gregarious nature, but didn't form factions, signifying loyalty to the king and unity amongst themselves. 
In ancient times, many high-ranking officials would form cliques and threaten the king's rule. Lower-ranking officials would present geese, as they fly in formation with a lead goose and follow behind in order. This gift represented adherence to rules and the ability to exercise self-discipline. Soldiers would gift wild chickens, which were difficult to domesticate as they preferred to starve rather than eat domestic feed. This gift symbolized resistance to temptation and a commitment to remain loyal. Finally, common people would offer ducks, representing simplicity and purity. Cow was supposed to bring a wild chicken as a gift, but instead, he brought an owl. The duke realized that Cow was subtly accusing him of being insufficiently filial. According to the rules, the person receiving the gift needs to return the gift, and Zheng Zhuanggong is a prince, so the gift should be jade, but jade is still very precious, unless he has made great achievements, so he was demoted one level and gave a roasted whole lamb. These are the etiquette for Zheng Zhuanggong to meet Cao.